How's it going everyone, this is MindBlank, welcome back to my channel and Intel's definitely got one thing right, the Pentium G4560 CPU. AMD on the other hand is set to launch its Ryzen 3 lineup sometime in the third quarter for us end users and a little bit sooner for OEMs. Today we are going to get a rough idea of how these two CPUs should stack up, although things are not quite so cut and dry as they might seem. And I say that because I don't think Ryzen 3 will be the competition for the Pentium G4560, not in performance and not in price going by the $169 price on the cheapest Ryzen 5, the 1400. Considering the G4560 is 60 something dollars, I find it hard to believe that we'll have a Ryzen 3 SKU at the same level. Naturally, as you'll see, there's a definite performance gap between them in favor of Ryzen 3, but there's also probably going to be a gap in price. Now don't get me wrong, I'd love to see Ryzen 3 at this price point, that would be absolutely phenomenal, but we also have to be realistic in our expectations. Anyway, this is the Pentium G4560, a 2-core, 4-thread, KB Lake based processor that sells for around $64 depending on retailer and is often out of stock due to its easy to discern even from the basic specs price to performance ratio. The G4560 runs at 3.5GHz max clock with no turbo boost, comes with only 3 megs of cache and also has some other features disabled, including Intel Optane which would have been a nice addition for budget builds. It's a 54 watt TDP part and barely gets hot, so much so that the included anemic stock heatsink can successfully be used without destroying your ears. I was anticipating vacuum cleaner like noise levels from it, but it doesn't even ramp its fan up during load with a cool 54 Celsius in a 23 Celsius ambient. This is certainly a nicer price, saving you from additional costs and lower noise cooling. On the Ryzen 3 side, we've got some leaks on the Ryzen 3 1200, which seems to be a 4 core 4 thread CPU clocked at 3.1 GHz base clock, 8 megs of cache and probably a 3.2 GHz all core boost. We don't know if this is the top Ryzen 3, probably not, but it's also probably going to be the second top choice with the best price to performance ratio from the 3 lineup, just like the 1600 and 1700 CPUs are. So representing the Ryzen 3 lineup is a Ryzen 5 1500X. Yes, a 1500X not a 1400 and I am aware that the 3 series will have 8MB of cache instead of 16MB the 1500X has. I don't have a 1400 on hand which comes with 8MB of cache, but then again this is a simulation and we don't really know how set in stone the specs even are. Is this the final boost clock, the final base clock, etc. If this bothers you, then you can just factor in around minus 5% tops difference due to the reduced 8 megabytes of cache. I have also thrown in here an i5-2500K purely for my and your curiosity. I want to see how the G4560 stacks up to a 4.5GHz 2500K paired with 2133MHz RAM, the fastest you can get on a P and Z67 motherboard. Also check out my 2500K vs Ryzen 5 is it time to upgrade video for even more benchmarks. Alright, so I am using a GTX 1070 for this, which is a bit of a stretch for the Ryzen 3 and even more so for the G4560. The reason is that I don't have the 2500K system anymore to test with another down-to-earth GPU and all benchmarks were done with a 1070 on it. I really wanted to have the 2500K in here, so this is the reason why I aligned all platforms to the same common denominator, the GTX 1070. Again, if this bothers you, just keep in mind that things are evolving and we'll soon have GTX 1070 performance in the $200 to $250 range, which is a more realistic choice for something like the Pentium G4560 and a real world choice for any future Ryzen 3 users. Before we get to the benchmarks, a word on platform and testing methodology. The G4560 is tested with 2400MHz RAM at CL14. You're much more likely to pair this with an H or B board instead of a Z board that allows higher RAM clocks. I've covered this in my truth about Ryzen and RAM speed video. For the 1500X slash Ryzen 3, I am using 2933MHz CL15 RAM and this is again realistic since there's no limitation on RAM and CPU speed on B350 boards. Also, these boards are pretty cheap, so much so that they're going to still be a great pair for a Ryzen 3 CPU. I also overclocked the simulated Ryzen 3 CPU to 3.8GHz, a clock speed that's really likely to be obtainable in safe conditions, maybe even under stock cooling. 
I'm also only going to cover games here, I won't go into productivity and synthetic benchmarks like I did in my 2500k is it time video, those will have to wait for the Ryzen 3 release. Ok, so BF1 starts it off and the 2500K is leading here, although the overclocked Ryzen 3 is holding out pretty well. One would argue that G4560 is above 60 FPS, but looking at the 1% and 0.1% lows, we can see it's not in an ideal situation for a multiplayer shooter. In order for the frame time analysis to be easier to see, I group the 2500K with the overclocked Ryzen 3 and the stock with the G4560, which by the way is showing frequent spikes in the 15 milliseconds and up range, accounting for the lows we've seen earlier. Anyway, next is Mass Effect Andromeda, which really needs more than 4 cores, or at least a highly clocked 4 core, in order to perform well. This is actually the reason why the 2500K has a definite lead here. Frame times, on the other hand, show roughly the same behavior between the overclocked R3 and the 2500K, but we do see the G4560 giving us some spikes above 40 milliseconds, actually well above 40 milliseconds, which can easily be felt during gameplay. And rather sadly, its 0.1% low is, well, really low. Moving on to The Witcher 3, things stop being so dramatic and the G4560 shows decent performance barring the 0.1% lows, which will always be an issue on what is essentially a dual core chip. But frame time analysis shows that no matter the CPU, we do see spikes sometimes and we never see a consistent frame time variance. Surprisingly, the G4560 really doesn't look that bad in this context and I can say that Witcher 3 never felt bad on this CPU and the same can be said for the R3 of course. Watch Dogs 2 again loves high core counts, so it's nowhere near to performing at its best on the GTX 1070 regardless of the CPU used here. Both the G4560 and the stock R3 see quite a small 0.1% low. On the frame time analysis part, I did get some spikes with the overclocked Ryzen 3 that were not present on the 2500K, which actually looks rather ok in this game. Both the G4560 and the stock Ryzen 3 show random spikes as well as inconsistent frame pacing sadly. Surprisingly, Ashes didn't perform all that bad on the G4560, but it did see quite a high jump in performance between stock and overclocked Ryzen 3, beating out the 2500K. Lows here are not particularly good for any CPU, which is expected considering the limited core and thread counts. Frame time analysis looks pretty ok on the 2500K and overclocked Ryzen 3, but the G4560 is constantly going above 35 milliseconds as opposed to the stock R3. In GTA 5, the G4560 is trailing again, giving us some unwanted 0.1 and 1% lows. The stock R3 easily distances itself apart here in the lows department and when overclocked is just a little bit behind the 2500K. We do see a few more spikes on the overclocked Ryzen 3 and it arguably looks worse than the 4.5GHz 2500K. But when compared to the G4560, the roles are reversed and the Pentium shows a worse looking frame time graph across the board. Lastly is Crisis 3, where to my surprise the G4560 jumps from always having the last spot in this comparison to being second last. Naturally all 1% and 0.1% lows are bad on these CPUs as Crisis really likes itself some high thread counts. As a result, all frame time graphs here look rather bad with huge frame time variance, but there's noticeable improvements between the stock and overclocked R3. And this concludes the testing section, and in my time with the G4560 and the simulated Ryzen 3, this is what I gathered. Leaving numbers aside, the Pentium G4560 is, right now, the ultimate budget gaming PC enabler. Ryzen 3 will more than likely offer better performance than the Pentium, but it will, again more than likely, do so at a higher price point. I can safely say that both the stock R3 and G4560 offer adequate performance in all these CPU intensive games, so if you're thinking of picking up either of the two for 1080p 60fps gaming on a budget, you really won't be disappointed. What I'd really like to see is AMD's response to the G4560, as this really is a budget build top pick with its $65 price tag. Speaking of budget builds, we will have one in the next video most likely, but until then I want to see your comments, questions and suggestions down below. Thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing and don't forget to check out my Twitter and Patreon pages linked in the description down below. See you next time everybody, bye bye.